Hello and welcome to the Buy Intent podcast with me, Rocky Natha. Today, our guest is Claudia Nanino from Colorado. Claudia is a master breathwork facilitator. She's a crystal curator and an explorer of non-ordinary states of consciousness. Now, I think um, there's so much in Claudia's story that, you know, so many of us would resonate with. She's a Colorado native born to immigrant parents. She returned to Denver in 2016 after a devastating divorce and sought out non-traditional healing modalities after Western approaches felt out of alignment, right? And left her feeling stuck in in logic. I think we can all relate to that a little bit. And um, Claudia has a beautiful story of how she began to rebuild her life and and really move through the spiritual evolution through different teachers, but then finding conscious breath work, which um, she says brought her healing to the next level. So today, Claudia is going to help us understand what breath work is all about. Claudia, a very, very warm welcome to the Buy Intent podcast. Thank you, Rocky. Thanks. To, thank you so much for having me. No, it's our absolute pleasure. And um I'm sure you've seen in the last year and a half, <laughs> breath work is the buzzword, <laughs> yes. um, you know, and, and naturally considering everything we're going through, um, COVID aside, I think just the shattering of old paradigms for so many people um, and kind of coming back to self. Um, but there's still a lot of misconception, right? Just right off the bat when it comes to breath work. Mm-hmm. For so many people, it's just what? <laughs> Um, you know, what, what is breath work? What isn't it? Yeah. Well, breath work is a, a generic term for whenever you are being intentional with your breath, whenever you are pausing, noticing your breath, perhaps altering it, perhaps following a specific pattern or specific sequence. Um, but even taking as few as a, a, even just pausing and taking a few deep breaths can be considered breath work. Um, there are more ancient practices, um, as we were discussing previously, elements of yoga, pranayama, um, or elements of qigong also include breath work, and those are thousands of years old, and those are very beautiful practices and have their own uh, benefits available, and you can do those in as few as a minute, five minutes, ten minutes, sometimes longer, uh, and I consider those to be more of like a meditative breath allowing you to be really present, um, allowing you, depending on which technique you're using, oftentimes they're designed to calm the nervous system, to allow you to tap into your parasympathetic nervous system. Um, There are elements of Kundalini that incorporate a lot of breath and a lot of chanting and a lot of movement. And those can help you to achieve kind of ecstatic states using your breath, um, which is another beautiful variation. Um, and then some people may have heard of Wim Hof, who is yes. very popular these days. And I love what he's doing for breath work because he's putting a lot of science and research and uh, investigation into how we breathe and how, when we alter our breath in certain ways, what that does to the physical body. And for in his life, he's using breath to push the body past these perceived barriers that we thought we had, you know, he is climbing mountains in the snow in shorts and topless and not feeling the effects of that those extreme cold temperatures because he's able to harness the power of his breath or and he does a lot of um you know cold therapy and ice exposure and and swimming in the arctic oceans Uh, and he's able to do so again by harnessing the power of his breath and then there is kind of another bucket of breath work that i and, and this is where i tend to spend most of my time in and where i share the most and I consider this bucket um, a group of breathwork styles that are journey type experiences that allow you to alter your state of consciousness by committing to a certain technique, by a certain pattern of breath. And those um, are longer, typically about an hour, if not more. Some of them like holotropic breathwork. I think some of their workshops are seven, eight hours sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, the offer, the style that I offer the actual breath portion is about an hour, but the workshop itself ends up being about two hours. Cause I want to make sure I'm providing a lot of, uh, information and introduction to people so that they can be really relaxed and allow themselves to have the full experience. Cause it's these, this bucket can be more unusual. It can be more surprising. There is an incredible amount of healing available across all of the different styles, to be honest. Yeah. Um, there's healing available on a physical level, on an emotional level, mentally and spiritually. 
Um, and everybody's pretty much guaranteed those physical benefits and those vary depending on which style you choose and how much time you're giving it. But it, it can be things like uh, improvement to your blood pressure, improvement to the alkalinity of your blood, which is directly tied to your stress levels and your stress hormones. And the alkalinity of our blood is what um, can help prevent disease from be being able to inhabit the body. Um, again, I think I already mentioned being able to regulate our nervous system, being able to regulate emotions, they're tying it to how we form memories. There's a lot of research being done to kind of understand what happens physiologically. Um, but then this bucket that I like to play in has an infinite amount of possibilities on those other layers that I was discussing. And, and really it's been beautiful for myself on the emotional and on the spiritual level. Um, it really allowed me to, as you mentioned in the intro, kind of bring together all of the different work that I was doing. And I felt like I was on a this significant course of self-study and understanding like, okay, and now I kind of see why those things happened. And I, now I can see why I should be able to accept these aspects of myself and forgive these aspects of myself, but I can't, it doesn't feel authentic in my heart to say those things, even though I've learned all the reasons why, and I've, I've practiced all these different ways of self-forgiveness, but I still just can't say it authentically. And it was really breath work that, um, really surprised me even from the first time, but as I continued to commit to it, just seeing what was available, seeing how altering my state of consciousness gave me a different perspective, um, allowed me to, to kind of look at myself in the entirety um, and really learn to love all the aspects of myself, even things that I was struggling with, um, things that I was labeling as bad or that I had so much regret for. Um, to really just understand that they're all parts of me and that they all deserve love. And um, perhaps I was making certain choices or taking certain actions based on just a very limited level of tools and of consciousness and awareness that I had. And now I've grown so much more than that. And Breathwork gave me the capacity to really understand that and then really feel love for every aspect of myself, even the parts that were felt more difficult to love. Um, and I, and it sounds big and it sounds wild, but and it kind of is like, if, if you come into one of these bigger experiences, especially if you come into a group setting, like it can be pretty wild. Um, the room can get pretty loud. People are moving through a lot of energy, uh, a lot of old emotions, sometimes healing trauma, sometimes um, releasing energy that's been passed to us through our through our ancestors or from the collective, you know, there's so much happening in our world right now. And some of it's ours and some of it's not ours that has been, but we've, we're holding on to anyways. And it's all, it's all energy. You know, it's energy we carry with us It's energy we hold in the body. And so this is a really beautiful, simple, but profound practice to start to identify where any of those energies might exist that don't belong to us that we're ready to let go of. Yeah, that was amazing. I think you touched on so many aspects of it and so many questions we, we're going to dig into and learn a little bit more about all of it. But, um, you know, the one thing that's kind of sticking out for me is, you know, the, the simplicity in it. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, you can also take this journey to the depths of how far you want to discover elements of yourself. But um, I think, like you were saying, there's power even in that one minute of, conscious breath work mm -hmm. and so you know it's still a really powerful practice and um I'd assume I, I don't know too much about the history but something that that you know our ancestors did <laughs> and it's part of the things we've lost in our modern lifestyle mm -hmm. um because I think for a lot of people kind of leading into um another question that popped up for me is somebody might question and say because a lot of our listeners will be new to this very open to learning but but new to this world and um new to you know breath work on this level and i think a question that might come up for them is well you know breathing is just what happens right physiologically it just happens every day we do it um what what's wrong with how we're breathing <laughs> um you know non-consciously unconsciously every day yeah. yeah and i think it's interesting as people start to have those questions and start to become more aware of their breath, then it's easier for them to notice that our breath, while it is ha happening automatically for us, 
the pace does change kind of based on our situation and based on any emotions we might be feeling or any stress um, that might be occurring. Um, or even if somebody is doing exercise, like obviously the, the breath starts to increase in order to bring more oxygen so that the, everything can work at the, at the level that it needs to in order for you to continue with that exercise. And um, it's an important part of yoga, even though yoga isn't always considered like a strenuous cardiovascular activity, like it does take a lot of energy and effort and they tie the movement to the breath so that people can continue with the practice and get better and, and hold the pose perhaps a little bit longer and push themselves a little bit deeper. So even as this, as breath work is starting to become more popular, I love that it's just people are starting to ask the question like, okay, I don't often think about my breath. So now that I'm starting to think about it, I can start to notice when it's a slower, when it's faster, when I'm holding my breath, people hold their breath all the time without even being aware of it, especially in moments of stress or anxiety or fear, or just like a big emotion. Like it's, it's very easy for us to hold our breath and wait and see what's going to happen next. And so um, just that awareness is pretty key. Um, and then as you were saying too, it is, it's so simple and, I promise there are benefits in doing even just one minute of breath work. I think there's a study, a research study in Japan that measured the benefits of pulling as few as six breaths. And those are some of the things I shared with you. So six breaths is so easy. That's maybe a minute, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, depending on how slow you're doing that. But like everybody can give themselves one minute of intentional breath. And just really, whenever you're following your breath too, you're in your body in that moment. You're actually also in the present moment. You're not thinking about anything else if you're focused on your breath. And that's, you know, a key element of meditation. And so I find that sometimes people who struggle with meditation or think like, oh, my mind's too busy. It's so hard for me to sit still. Follow your breath for, start with one minute, then increase to three, then increase to five. And, and notice by using the breath as an anchor, how it starts to kind of quiet down everything else. And just, again, allow you to be really present and in your body. Yeah, I, I totally resonate. I, you know, when I was a kid, I think I mentioned earlier, when we were speaking offline, um, I grew up exposed to a lot of this stuff. But, you know, life's about that right moment and the right teacher. And as much as I was exposed to meditation as a kid, I just, I could never get it. And um, in my 20s, I went for a retreat. And it was through breath work that I understood oh, that is how I get through that, you know? Um, so that was amazing. And that's what I teach. I'm like, it's the breath. <laughs> that's how you get to, you know, meditation because um, it's almost an impossible task to ask the mind to quiet itself, right? So, yeah. And that reminds me of a moment I had uh, that I just kind of connected the dots on recently, but I was practicing yoga for a long time. So practicing pranayama along with it, um, but still hadn't really put that much importance on the breath piece of it. I was more focused on the physical movement on the asana. And I remember after one intense and beautiful class that we went in to lay down afterwards into the Shavasana into the that meditative state. And I uh, slipped into an altered state of consciousness. And when I came out of it, I was convinced that the, the teacher had hypnotized me and I wasn't, I wasn't mad about it, but I went home to my uh, husband at the time. And I was like, wow, somehow I was hypnotized at the end of that class. I just, kind of slipped out of my body and it was all these sensations, all these thoughts and, and it was wild and it felt great, but like, I've never had that happen before. Maybe it was just the sound of his voice. And I just associated it all with the teacher, but now I'm realizing, no, like that's, I think the goal, like, I think it's yoga is to move out some energy, to relax the body, to get everything so that you can then lay in Shavasana and have a really beautiful, intense meditation and, and access those deeper layers of yourself. Yeah, that sounds delicious. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, a lot of us who kind of do yoga can relate to just feeling amazing, um, lying in Shavasana at the end. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've cried and my husband used to laugh at me, you know, because um, I'd come back teary eyed from yoga. He'd be like, what's wrong? And I'd be like, oh, no, it was just amazing. <laughs> and I'd be like, in the end, you're lying because you just release, you release yeah. so much. And it's it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a long-term effect to what it does for you and for your life. Um, and, you know, I, I do truly believe that. But kind of segueing into the benefits, and we spoke about a myriad of them, so many of them. Um, 
And, and you've shared some of these, um, you know, on, on, on your Instagram page, et cetera. And I wanted to kind of dig into some of them. Um, and I think the first one was um, speaking about trauma mm. and the release of trauma. Um, Cause that's something, you know, we're all dealing with and I think people really struggling outside of psychology to find other tools outside of having a person guide you in a session when you're on your own um, and outside of trauma, even anxiety, which is just, rampant <laughs> um, with everything we're having to deal with. How, how does breath work help with, with trauma and, and anxiety? Yeah, well, the, the style that I work with, which I actually don't know, I think you mentioned in the intro, but I don't think I've said it, is conscious breath work. That's one of these variations of, the, um, of this bucket that I was talking about where you can alter your consciousness with breath work. Um, and in the way I was trained and, and how I've experienced and how I've seen by sharing it with other people is that we are breathing in a certain way to maximize our intake of oxygen and to maximize our intake of energy. And the oxygen does all of that beautiful physiological stuff we were talking about. And then the energy, um, and, and you know, we know now through quantum physics that everything is energy and including us, including our emotions. And so we are bringing in new energy so we can go and find anywhere we're holding on to an old energy, an old emotion, oftentimes related to trauma. Um, oftentimes perhaps the seed of anxiety. Uh, and, and these live in our tissue. We, we know this now, and this is one beautiful way to find where those energies exist and to work on it, to release it and transmute it. And I always share with people in breath work, you, you never know what's gonna come up. It's always gonna be something that serves you, um, but it's always my recommendation to not have any attachments or expectations. Um, and that helps people who may have had some significant trauma in their life to feel more at ease um, because I've seen again and again, whatever comes up is only what you are ready to work through and to be free of in that moment, in that day. So it allows people to feel safe because some, sometimes people don't necessarily want, they, they, they do want to work through that trauma and to heal it. But the idea of actually dedicating an hour of breathing intensely to specifically re revisit it can feel very intense <laughs> and can sometimes create feelings of anxiety too. So in those, in, in that situation, like I'm always doing a lot of um, extra care and extra guidance, but it goes and it finds where these energies are trapped in the body to release it. And that, that feels like a variety of things when people are in this session. Um, sometimes it feels like physical sensations, like tingling vibrations. Sometimes it can feel like temperature, like heat, or feeling very cold, um, vocalization and emotions are incredibly common, especially since these are often a result of an old emotion. So I, that's why I'm saying those rooms can get kind of loud as people are starting to move through this stuff. And sometimes they're very clear on, I'm, I'm crying right now and I know why. And sometimes it's not, sometimes it's, it's literally just like a purge of energy and it's maybe coming out as laughter or anger or sighing. Um, and it's, incredibly effective um, and people come out of it just always surprised, always in awe and always feeling much better. Um, and, and when I say surprised, oftentimes it's because they might've expected something specific that they're working through to have come up but it might've been absolutely something else, perhaps a visit from somebody who's passed or a conversation that they had as a child that they now realized how that's left an echo, like an energetic echo that's affected their entire life. So. Um, coming back to the trauma and the anxiety, like this is a really powerful tool to start to work through those things and to start to see your relationship to them um, and how it, it would provide a lot of perspective and clarity just so that you can start, I don't want to say changing the story, but just having a different relationship with the story and, and coming to a place of acceptance um, and understanding. And sometimes people, and it's beautiful and people can even find gratitude for certain traumatic experiences or gratitude for their anxiety because they now realize like, okay, well, here I am today doing this work, able to overcome it. And then how that's going to impact the rest of their life is tremendous. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I've, I've had a few friends who've done things like ayahuasca. Um, mm -hmm. And so of course I'm seeing kind of that, that similarity in that experience. We, we do things like, like where does plant medicine meet breath work? Do you <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> um, so plant medicine is obviously also gaining a lot of popularity right now. And um, I'm, I'm a big believer in it. I think it can be a beautiful tool for the right person and in the right set and setting is, is 
incredibly important. Um, and uh, in the United States, most of it's illegal, you know, so it's like we're either having to go to another country or we're having to go to an underground type scenario. And so, again, for the right person in the right set and setting, it can be a really wonderful way to alter your state of consciousness. Um, oftentimes, you mentioned ayahuasca, that's the, the primary chemical there that's working is NNDMT. Um, there are other, there's psilocybin, there's 5-MeO-DMT, these are all different psychedelics, essentially, that'll help you to kind of maybe separate from the ego for a little while, and again, get that kind of higher perspective and get um, a lot of clarity and uh, a lot of understanding. Um, breath work can do the same thing, but we're just using our breath. We're simply tapping into our own abilities, our own strength, our own resiliency. And I think a beautiful thing about breath work is, well, it's not illegal, it's available to everybody. Um, I do recommend finding a style and a facilitator that works for you or trying a few different styles and seeing where you get the most benefit. Um, I see a lot of people going to Wim Hof because they're much more science-based, you know, maybe what I'm talking about might sound a little too spiritual or a little too woo-woo. And so they, they want to go more of a scientific route. Beautiful. Like go there, start there, try that. There's a lot of incredible healing there. From my understanding, a lot of people are getting relief from their anxiety by using Wim Hof techniques. So that's awesome. If that works for you. Perfect. Um, and this style can be very much like a plant medicine journey. However, you're more in control of it because you're controlling your breath. Your breath's never going to run away from you. So unlike taking a plant medicine where it's like you're in until it's done, like breath work, you have control of the gas, like your foot on the gas. So you can go for it. And I recommend that you do, but if it starts feeling like too much, you can back off and you can kind of dance with it a little bit. So it's a, it's a way of experiencing that those same places, um, but by simply tapping into yourself. And I know that sounds wild and like a big promise, but I just watched this documentary uh, just a week ago. I don't know if you've heard of it, DMT Quest by Ben Stewart. And he's, it was all about how we um, endogenously produce DMT within our body already. They're, they're doing a lot of research and discovering how we do. And breathwork was a common theme and um, they need more money and they need more time to actually be able to fully connect the dots, but they're seeing more and more that breath work is one way that we can create DMT naturally in the body. And that's how we access these altered states of consciousness. That's amazing. Um, I love it. it. It personally speaks to me because um, I think exactly for the reason you stated, I, I want to have an experience where, you know, there's some level of I can control the pace of it. And ayahuasca has always seemed a little scary. <laughs> so as much as all my friends are doing it, it's just, I've always been like, I don't, I want something that's from within me, if that makes any sense and isn't about anything external, but just, you know, knowing there's something within myself, I can tap to, to get those answers, to release things. Mm -hmm. um, so that's great. That gives me um, a wonderful option um, and it's really great to learn about that and that you can dig into breathwork like this. So thank you. And I think hopefully for a lot of other people, you know, it'll kind of resonate in the same way. And I know we were we, so many other benefits. We kind of spoke about the, the trauma aspect, um, revealing these hidden parts of our psyche. Um, but then it's also just the, you know, I think you mentioned a lot of the, the physical benefits. Um, but then there's also kind of, you spoke about the emotional and the spiritual. And I'd love to kind of touch on that as well is what breath work can do, even if in, in its simplest form, in the easiest, you know, way um, for somebody um, in their emotional and their spiritual lives. Yeah. So there are some techniques that um, something like breath of fire, which you may be familiar with, that is uh, a way to move energy very quickly in the body. So I always recommend it for somebody who is perhaps feeling very lethargic and they might reach for a cup of coffee. I'm like, oh, try breath of fire for a minute or two instead. It's also great if you're feeling a big emotion, if you're feeling, if something has triggered you and you're feeling whatever heightened emotion and you just want to move through it quickly, like a minute of breath of fire is incredibly effective for moving that energy out and kind of shifting and being, allowing you to, uh, uh, the ability to kind of take a step back and like, okay, I can handle this situation a little better now. Like I've moved yeah. through some of that emotion. And it's not about like denying the emotion or numbing the emotion as it is opposed to as it is like really embodying it and just moving it through quickly and processing it. Um, and then there are other breath techniques that are available um, to help prepare for sleep. You know, a lot of people now are struggling um, with sleep issues um, and that's tied to stress, tied to anxiety, tied to 
everything that's going on in the world right now. And so there are practices you can do for even five minutes that allow you just to calm the body down, calm down the nervous system, bring down your heart rate, and just kind of tell the body that you're safe. You can relax. It's time to let things feel easy so that you can prepare for a better rest. Um, so that's kind of some ways that you can use simple breathwork practices to help with the emotional side of things. And then obviously what I was referring to earlier, those bigger type experiences help process emotion on a very deep level. And sometimes in a way that's surprising, like each breathwork journey can be, uh, not can be, is different from the one you had before. And it's also different for every person too. And I've, I've practiced hundreds of times now and, um, I still, as a human, it's just impossible not to have, have expectations as to what you think might occur. And like, I almost always cry, as you were saying, you cry after yoga. Like I almost always cry during breath work and, and I'm grateful for it. It yeah. always feels like a really beautiful cathartic release. Um, and the other day I went into a session like, oh, I need a good cry. This is going to be so good. I can't wait. And it was nothing about the sorrow I was feeling at that moment. <laughs> Instead, it was like one of the most blissful, peaceful, nurturing. I just felt like I was held and I was smiling the whole time. And I'd, I've never had one like that. And I came out of it afterwards, of course, feeling incredible, uh, feeling a complete shift in my emotional state and also just laughing. I was like, wow, I really thought like that was going to go totally different than it did. And this obviously served me so much better just to feel nothing but like loved and nurtured and held. Um, so yeah, that there's a lot of emotional benefits available and, and working through emotions and releasing emotions. And, um, and then in terms of spiritual, it's it, when we play in these non-ordinary states of consciousness, it's, it's very easy to kind of understand who we really are, how we're all connected, um, where, how energy works, how we're part of, uh, we're, how we're all connected on an energetic level on an energetic basis. I mean, you just start to really, be able to see and feel and understand these um, kind of more esoteric type topics and states, but, and, and things that we hear and that we want to believe, like I always considered myself a spiritual person. If you had asked me, I was raised religious, but I didn't really follow that religion so much anymore, but I always thought, Oh, I'm, I'm very spiritual. I'm deeply spiritual, but it wasn't until I started working in these other, in these modalities like breath work and plant medicines that I really understand like, oh, I didn't even really know what that word meant, or I didn't know when I was saying that, like, yeah, it was authentic in the moment, but I, I, I didn't even understand what that encompassed and like what that really meant and all, of, all that was available once you started to actually explore those spaces. And so I say that I was like on a spiritual rocket ship um, when I found out <laughs> and that just like kicked things off even further. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and you mentioned earlier, which I thought was so powerful about that, the separation from ego mm -hmm. um, and just that opportunity because um and i think you know like i said in, in the intro resonating with the fact that western approaches are great and they have power mm -hmm. but i think for a lot of us are proving not enough um knowing things like thinking traps and then having to use my mind to think myself out of anxiety doesn't work <laughs> not for me personally um, it can at certain times, usually after, to reflect on. But in the moment, you need the body almost. You need something, something else. So I think incredible power in that and, and that separation from ego, because I think that's also a journey a lot of us want to undertake um, in knowing the other self <laughs> or more of the self or what is the self, right? Just exploring those questions. Exactly. And I think there's a misconception right now that the ego is bad and we have to like control it or kill it. Or like, I've heard of these phrases. And I'm like, Oh no, no, that's not, <laughs> that's not the case. It's more of just understanding it and realizing what is ego and what is actually the true self and being more of the witness to when your ego is really acting up and wanting to control the ship and practices like breath work give you spaces to really be in that and, and witness that. And then that starts to translate more into your daily life, like why the ego does what it does and, and what, it, what it's really needing, what it's really asking for. If it's showing up really loud, like what's the little quiet voice inside that's actually trying to be heard? Yeah, I, I, I love that because 
um, you know, self-compassion is also something I think a lot of us are trying to, to learn, um, grasp and deal with. And so much of where our egos or how they function rather um, is just because of the nature of the world and how we've been socialized. Yeah. And suddenly you're starting to unravel and be like, oh, okay. Um, but I think there's something really powerful you mentioned earlier as well, and that was about forgiveness. Um, how, how do you forgive um, parts of your ego or your ego or yourself? Um, as you reflect and you step back and you're like, oh, <laughs> I can see that. Um, but then, it, then comes that part of how do you forgive yourself for that? How do you release that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard because, you know, we carry a lot of guilt, a lot of shame. Um, we regret some actions or some choices. Uh, but I think with my journey with breathwork, what got me past that barrier to forgiveness that I just kept butting up against was um, just being able to see that that was an old version of me. And, and she was simply doing the best she could. And it, it wasn't good, you know, that doesn't justify or doesn't mean that I'm not accountable or responsible for what happened, but just like understanding that like, she was just hurt and confused and lost and struggling and reaching for tools and behaviors that were incredibly harmful, but she didn't understand there were, there were other tools available and just coming to a place of acceptance, like, okay, that's okay. Like it's, it's, it's simply where I was at in that moment of my life. Um, and the most beautiful thing was, is when I, I can remember the exact breathwork experience where it happened, I just started saying like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forgive you, I forgive you, just talking to myself. And within one breath, I finally felt like true forgiveness, like just my heart just expanded and opened and I just be became more whole, like integrated all of the parts of myself, not, not just like bad parts and good parts. I'm just like, okay, this is a whole entity now, whole person. And, and then the next breath, it was the realization of like, oh, there's actually nothing to forgive. I've been spending years trying so hard to forgive myself and not, and, and it not feeling real to forgiving myself. And then realizing it's all beautiful and it's all the way it was meant to be. And this is where I get to be now as a result of all of those choices. And, and I, not that I don't feel sorry for anyone that I hurt along the way. I'm, I'm always will be sorry. And I'm always going to allow my future choices to reflect my desire to never return to those places again and never hurt people in that same way again. And so it's like forgiveness and, and true acceptance and true embodiment of all of the work. Yeah. And yeah, then it's forgiveness of others. I'm sorry, I was just saying forgiveness of others. <laughs> that like, that can be hard too. You know, when we, when there's somebody who has done some harm to us that just feels unforgivable, um, the most important gift we receive from forgiveness is for ourselves. Like, because my, my brother teacher used to always say, like, when you're holding someone over the fire for some wrong that they've done for you, you're, you're burning your hand in the process. And it's so true. And so even if you feel like something they've done, something someone has done to you is unforgivable, like you're keeping yourself in that energy by not forgiving them and by holding on to all that anger and resentment. So when you are able to forgive them, and it, again, it doesn't excuse what they've done. It doesn't mean that they shouldn't be accountable for their actions, but you release that energy and you can move on from it and, and give yourself that gift of just being in acceptance and in ease. Yeah, it's amazing. And you know, we touched on just the fact that you've had this incredible journey and, and, and really a story and a journey around how you came to this place as well. Um, I mean, could we, could we talk a little bit about your story and your journey and um, to any extent you want to share, but I think um, everyone will, would want to hear about your journey. Yeah, of course. You know, I had um, from the outside what appeared to be a, a perfect life. You know, I was married with two children and a very successful career that I had built for myself and, and living a beautiful life and um, enjoying it quite a bit uh, on things that I thought were fulfilling at the time, mostly material things or traveling. Um, but over a course of years, there was just like this deep unhappiness brewing, um, primarily in my marriage uh, and things that I didn't have the tools or the awareness to even really identify, much less deal with. 
Um, and we were trying traditional things. Um, we were trying therapy. Um, but I wasn't looking back. I wasn't being fully honest in those, in, in that work. I was hiding certain aspects. I thought some things were too big to discuss or too, I didn't know how to really express the pain or the needs that I had that weren't being met. Um, and also I wasn't ready to admit where I was not showing up, where I was making poor choices, where I wasn't in alignment. Um, either was not ready or I was in total denial of it. And eventually things imploded as they do, you know, when you ignore something long enough, like it, it will implode. Um, and I was making a lot of actions and take, making a lot of choices I'm not proud of. And um, the marriage ended and once it was just me and I no longer had him to blame and to point the finger at and to be so angry at, uh, and, and to, to justify whatever I had done. And it was just me sitting with the pain and the emotions. I finally started to look at like, okay, what was my part in things? And, and I was working with a therapist and, and I was even in 12 step for a little while for um, some compulsive behaviors. And uh, it was all about, okay, let's look at you. Like you're done whining and complaining and, and blaming, like wh what's your part in things? It's there, you always have a part in things. And at that moment, I was just so devastated that I, I probably could have continued down a dark path of denial and destruction, but I, I didn't, I didn't want that to be the case. I wanted that to be the lowest point. And as I mentioned, working with in therapy and 12 step, and then starting to realize like, okay, there's actually more here I was doing yoga every day, sometimes twice a day meditation, like uh, all of a sudden had this, a lot of more free time. So I was trying to fill it up with things that were good for me. Um, I quit drinking because I also wasn't was another part of like the compulsive issues and, and certainly not doing any good for me. Um, and then I started working with plant medicines. That was kind of the first kind of alternative thing. Then I found a spiritual coach. Um, then I started, then I had like this year of yes, where any recommendation that anybody offered, I said yes to, and whether that was working with like a medium or a tarot card healer or Reiki or yes. sound healing um, anything that came across my path, I'm like, yes, if this, if you recommend it and it sounds safe, I'm doing it. And, uh, breath work, I found kind of more towards the end of that kind of deep exploration or not the end of it. Cause you're never quite done, but that, that huge, huge portion of change and of shift. And I thought I was just going to a class where we'd sit down and we'd be led through some different elements of pranayama. And, and yeah, that first experience was huge. Um, and I often wonder I had already been working with plant medicines before coming to breath work. And I often wonder if I, if that allowed me to be so open, um, that that experience was as profound as it was, but then I see people who have never worked with plant medicines and come to breath work and have an experience as profound as the one as I had. So I think you never know. I think it depends on the person, um, being open to this type of work and being able to really give it your all certainly, um, kind of ensures, a. uh, uh a deeper experience, but it was huge. My first one was huge. I had massive amount of emotional release. I had a complete out of body experience. I had like, it was very psychedelic for me, lots of colors, lots of sensations, like beautiful. It was all beautiful. Um, and I was hooked after that first time <laughs> and I, I approached my teacher and immediately inquired about training with him and um, he was like, well, let's have you come back a few more times before we dive in. And then shortly after that, I was studying with him. And now I've been facilitating these type of journeys for about three years on my own now. And it's been incredible. It's, it's such a beautiful honor that people choose me to hold space for them and to facilitate this type of deep work. Um, and it's, I feel so grateful. I left that old corporate career, you know, even though it was great money, uh, I am abundant in other ways, in all the ways now, as opposed to just that, that paycheck that was actually not really fulfilling me much at all. <laughs> it, although it was affording me a very comfortable lifestyle, like I'm much happier now. Um, and the abundance is coming in all ways, including financially. So I'm very grateful for this, for how my life has completely shifted. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's amazing. I think, um, yeah, again, just so much um, I, I shared with you earlier on, you know, I'm just kind of coming to that place, but hearing your stories, I've kind of moving through that place of 
yoga once a day to like, okay, every day, you know, and then twice a day. Um, I, I can't drink alcohol anymore. And um, it, it's just, it happened very organically mm-hmm. is that I had a little bit and my body just kind of rejected it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, you know, it just doesn't feel right anymore. And so going through these things and I'm speaking to a lot of women in my life and in, in different levels for different things, but um the sort of crumbling that's happening, I think for people who are ready, but you can almost feel that it's happening on a little bit of a bigger scale right now, where a lot of, I mean, of course, you know, our world is, is in that state, but for so many people, um, and I think, you know, breathwork may be the answer for so many, and I'm certainly very curious to, to investigate it with everything you've shared and to kind of delve, delve deeper, because I'm like, wow, it may be, like I mentioned earlier, my path as well. So thank you. And I think it's, it's the way you shared it. And um, yeah, it's amazing. So I guess leading me then to, and, and we pretty much are getting close up to time, but um, wh- where does somebody begin? Like somebody who, who's very new to this, wh- where yeah. do they start? How do they, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it depends on the person and if they want to do something very much more introductory or if they want to dive into one of these deeper experiences. And then uh, introductory, you can find things on social media, on YouTube, um, that are great resources. I have, I have a bunch, I've started to create more posts just that are three or four minutes long, sharing different practices that you can take at any point during your day. And, and those will just be good again, to just be present, to get in the body, to start to build a relationship with your breath and start to realize this is how I felt three minutes ago. And this is how I feel now. And in between, that was a beautiful gift to myself and just start to create the relationship with breath that way. And then, um, Again, depending on the kind of person you are, if you want something a little bit more scientific and research-backed and measured, then maybe start with some Wim Hof techniques. Um, he, he does amazing work and has a ton of stuff available and there's a lot of practitioners around. And then if you're more curious about these kind of deeper um, journey type experiences, there are styles um, that includes things like holotropic breathwork, shamanic, rebirthing, transformational, conscious, uh, and then people are starting to create their own kind of flavors and put spins on it and calling it other names as well. Um, but explore that, see what's available in your community. Those ones um, oftentimes are available virtually. I think mm. with the pandemic, a lot of us were pushed to create virtual offerings. I previously, the way I was trained and I believed that this work was better to be done in person. And then with pandemic coming and us everything moving to virtual, I was uh, at the request of many clients created a virtual offering and it's been so beautiful. I'm so glad that I was pushed to do that because, uh, I adapted it to allow it to feel safe in this virtual environment, but you still get all of the benefits. So finding somebody either who's local as people starting to gather in groups again, we'll see for right now (laughs) it's happening in different States. Um, and then, or potentially finding somebody online that you can work with that you resonate with. You like their energy, you like their style, you like what they're talking about, the different benefits. If that's what you're looking to work on in that moment and and trying it out and seeing if that works for you. Mm -hmm. Great. And I will link all of your details. so Everybody can find um, all the resources you share as well. So that will be in the description, but I've got one last question, but before we head there, um, and it's a fun question, <laughs> but before we head there, um, was there anything else you wanted to share that we didn't get to explore? Um, I just wanted to touch on what you mentioned earlier about how you just organically left alcohol as you started to dive more into your own journey and your own path and your own healing and And I think that's fascinating. I'm hearing that more and more and more. And I think that as we are on this journey and we're trying out different tools and modalities, we're also starting to be much more in tune with our bodies and with our energy. And for a lot of people, I have no judgment for anybody who drinks alcohol, but for a lot of people, once you start to become more in tune with yourself and you're living in a more, you're more aware of like vibration and doing practices like yoga or breath work or chanting or ecstatic dance, things that are bringing you to a higher vibration or even ecstatic states of vibration, you are very much more aware of something like alcohol that lowers the vibration. Like, yeah. and you can't deny it. You can't deny, it's not just about being hungover. It's about like how it affects you on every level. Um, and again, that, not for everybody, that doesn't necessarily happen to everybody, but what you've said, I a hundred percent resonate with. And so many of my friends have just 
they're not making any declarations of like, I'm sober, I'm never drinking again. It's just kind of like they just drift away from it. And if they go back to it, they re- are very quickly reminded of like, eh, no, that actually is not working for me. Like I am trying to continuously raise my vibration and, and have a more optimal state of health and sleep better and have more clarity and more awareness. And like, here's what helps me do those things. And here's what doesn't. And and it's okay. It's a dance. We're human. You know, sometimes we have to circle back to something several times before we really get that understanding. Okay. Um, but it's just a beautiful part of the journey to understand what, what helps, what raises, what lowers and where you want to be and what choices you want to make to, um, to play with that and to dance with that. Mm, I love that. Thank you. And that helps me understand what I, you know, what I'm going through as well. And a really beautiful lens on that. And um, like I said, the last question is a fun one. So we'll be really quick and we'll wrap up. But, um, you know, we look at identity and purpose and experience at Bynton. Those are the three sort of big areas that we want to look at. And um, like sort of the question is going to be quick, kind of looking for really short answers. So even if it's just a word that resonates for you, that's totally fine. Two or three words or a sentence, right? Um, How can breathwork help us understand our identity? Mm, with perspective beautiful providing perspective beautiful how can breath work help us in our path to purpose um by creating spaciousness within ourselves so that we can attract more of what's going to help us find our purpose and live our purpose stunning and the last one how can breath work help shape our daily experience of life mm. Uh, in a very beautiful way, if it if, if becomes part of your morning or nightly routine, you'll immediately start to see the benefits of that. And that has an exponential effect into your life and all aspects of your life. That was great. Um, Kloja, thank you so, so much for being here. This was amazing to everybody who is, you know, watching, listening, be sure to like, subscribe and, and, and follow Claudia's account. I'll link all your details. So yeah, thank yeah. you so much for being here with us. Yeah, my website is an excellent way to get in touch with me and to see what offerings I have. And on Instagram, I'm usually sharing a lot of content. Thank you for having me so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for being here. And we will catch you again soon. Bye for now.